Uh, I went through uh, Alan Wake's American Nightmare for the first time. I've ne I had never played it. Um... That is a game that I had to sit down and explain. All right, gang. This is about as Xbox Live Arcade as a game I've ever played on my show. Many of you don't know what the fuck Xbox Live Arcade is. It is a $15 to $20 very short game that is a lot more focused on action and it has a horde mode in it, despite the fact that its like premise doesn't really fit with that so i would say it's it's an indie game but that's not that doesn't it's capture not. the feeling and we can have right? a much more interesting conversation about what an indie game is in uh, just a few minutes it, yeah um, indie game doesn't describe the feeling of an xbox live arcade game no it, it is a it is a big budget xbox live arcade game actually like it, it looked great for the time uh, and as a remedy game it feels great and shoots great in particular it's a much faster snappier shooter compared to Alan Wake original. Um, it is also fiendishly short. I easily cleared the whole thing in four hours. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, they also got their money's worth out of those assets because you're actually completing three levels three times in a row in order to reach the ending of Alan Wake's American Nightmare. So when you, you bought the... an XBLA game, your expectation was that you were getting minimal, like, content length. You it's know, a cheapy they're... game. It's yeah. A, it's a, it's not, it's, it's, it's a cheapies. How, uh, how did you play it, actually? I played it on, uh, I played the Steam version. Okay, so they ported it, and then you could... Oh, individually... that, I played the Steam version that came out in 2012 or 2013, huh, okay. whenever that was. Um, which is fun because you get to you get to play a game that was clearly built for 720p at 4K, and you're like, I can't read the mini map at all <laughs> because it is taking up an area of my monitor the size of my thumb mm. uh, because none of the interface can scale at all. Um, uh, that being said. Um, it does something really, really, really fun. So it is Alan Wake. He's a writer. This is going to become an ongoing thing for the remainder of the conversation we're having today. Yep. And he shows up and he goes, hello, I'm Alan Wake and I'm a writer. And I am trapped in the sequence of bad decisions I made at the end of Alan Wake 1 in which I was a writer there. Um, this takes place in between 1 and 2? This takes place in between one and two in the not real world. Okay. Um, it it, it represents uh, a a like a a series of drafts. Alan is attempting to write to get out of the hell that he has put himself into. I see. Okay. And what might be my favorite example of. Uh, of like, hey, Wooly, did you know that like Scott Pilgrim's not like a good person? Mm -hmm. Do you know you you you're the the that that little factoid that little bit that yeah. that everyone just keeps coming back up with over and over and over, um, which is actually really funny about Scott Pilgrim of because he goes up you know a Pac Man blah blah blah, but every time I talk about or play Alan Wake, someone in the chat goes, you know. Alan doesn't seem to be a particularly good writer. Oh. <laughs> oh, interesting. Like okay. every hour on the hour, someone goes, it doesn't seem like Alan's a really good writer. Now, is there an understated thing that is like, this is established from the contents so, of the previous games in alan wake and in alan wake american nightmare and in alan wake 2 you are constantly finding your primary collectible which is manuscript pages yeah which are going to describe via like a stephen king novel some event that will occur right and while they're really fun and and inventive and and like fun to read in inside the the game's fiction they're also like needlessly deterministic and metaphor filled to the point of absurdity and Just hack shit yeah 
Because he's a crime, <laughs> okay. he's a he's a pulpy crime novelist. Okay, who okay. got trapped writing a thriller and then got trapped writing a horror uh, book, and this subtext becomes the text when you play control and get to talk to a couple people about what do you think of Alan Wake the writer? Oh, and they say he's pretty good, but he uses metaphors too much. Huh. <laughs> Because, okay, I, from the outside, would have assumed that Alan Wake is the Stephen King of his world. He is the Stephen King of his world. And Remedy is saying that Stephen King, <laughs> while a great writer, is maybe not the best writer. Okay, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Um, so Does American Alan Wake Nightmare... use magical Negroes at any point? Uh, no, he did not. Okay. Not, well. not, not, that, not, well, not to my knowledge. Not yet. Not, okay. not, no! May, no! Actually, no! He does! Wait! <laughs> Duddy? Alan Wake 2 features a prominent magical Negro named Mr. Door. Oh! <laughs> who was okay. supposed, supposed to... Be, everyone keeps arguing about this. There's, there's, there's debate as to whether or not he was going to be played by Lance Henriksen. Okay. Not Lance Henriksen. Lance Reddick. Sorry. Lance Reddick. Lance Reddick, yeah. Lance Henriksen's um, a very different non-black person. <laughs> absolutely. Well, um, because uh, because Reddick played a character in Quantum Break named Mister Hatch, and now there is a similar character who runs an almost Eric Andre style talk show named Mister Door. Well, uh, that's so. I guess he's a he's a shoe in for the American Society of Magical Negroes then. That's uh, correct. Ideally. A movie in which you have to say the whole movie title the whole thing. in order to get your ticket. That's correct. <laughs> there, where's the ride? I, I see no problem there. One ticket to what, sir? Yeah, what, what would you movie? like to see? What? What? I'm sorry. Could you say it really, really loud, <laughs> please? Why, do you, um, why would I buy this on my phone through the app? Does it ask me to confirm it via Siri? Why do I have to yeah. talk it in? Voice command. Also, come to think of it, the, the main character of Alan Wake 2 is a black woman, and she also has magical powers. Well, that's that's great. That's, um, that's real neat. Yeah, it is neat. Um, so, uh, she is, what, she's, she's uh, black Swedish. Uh named saga anderson but regardless back to um what do you call it uh american nightmare uh american nightmare uh is having you redo levels over and over and over and the reason why is because it is uh based around a time loop in alan is like kind of stuck writing himself like literally write, written himself into a corner different drafts so has of the to, same story and so has to keep redoing the events but it does something really fun because uh, everyone in the loop remembers everything. <laughs> Interesting. Um, so what ends up happening is you do the first level. I'll use that as an example. Oh no, evil monsters coming outside of the... Um, evil monsters are coming out of the, an oil derrick, right? Okay, so uh, in the page that Alan finds, uh, I was able to shut off the oil derrick once the lights were on and the valve was turned and a, a certain song was playing right so you realize oh i gotta get a battery i gotta get a cd i gotta get a, a valve handle and then i'll go and do that and that's your first level right and so the most of that first level is you going around and getting these items and then you set it up and then you fight a couple monsters and then you leave on loop two uh, the lady who's in the stage goes, yeah, it's weird. I can remember you doing that. So I just got all of that shit here. Oh, okay. So here it is. Huh. And then you grab it and you go and do it. Is he narrating as things happen? Yes. Okay. So like yeah. Strangers uh, in Fiction? Mainly through manuscript page because all the manuscript pages are narrated when you pick them up. Okay. Um, and then on loop three, she goes, oh, right. Uh, so you come out and you look at the oil derrick, which usually you have to go down to the motel and come back, and all the stuff is already in place. Like, she didn't just get it. She literally set it all up. Interesting. And you just do it, and it's done. And they all kind of work like that. So uh, I was told it was like four hours, but the first loop took me two. Mm -hmm. 
And I'm like, this isn't fucking four hours. That's ridiculous. But then the second loop took me like an hour and 20 minutes. And then the third lo loop between all three levels took me like a half hour. Because it's it's going even Speed to places ride. where like Alan is like driving. And instead of parking in the parking lot at the beginning of the level, he just went to the parking lot at the end of the level. Okay. Because he's like, oh, well, I'm going to have to turn the power back on. So I'll just drive over there right, and just right, start right. the level there. All the things um, you would do on your speed run, like yourself, basically. Yeah, and it's yeah. and it's just this fun little action game that everyone seems really hung up on its canonicity as to whether or not it is part of canon or if the events directly occurred. It doesn't matter. The 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 setting allows for a bunch of non-starter, non-canon events to have happened, but not to have counted. I mean, like, I, it's the, just the ultimate things that always that that the real question is is like whatever characters were introduced in these spinoffs do they there show are no up? characters introduced in this spinoff then whatever yeah okay there mm. are the none there like there's a couple uh, people you run into that Alan's like hello and they're like hello and they don't matter the only person that matters is uh his evil double which is in all of the games so whatever. So Alan Wake's American Nightmare, done and dusted in four hours. Fun little game. If you can pick it up on sale, it's a cool little flashback to like 20 fucking, I don't know, 11, 12, a while ago. Right. It's fun. Untouched and it's since and, then. And it gets to play a little bit with like the, the zanier parts of the fiction. And it's, it's very, it's like. You know, it's an Xbox Live Arcade game, and it's more actiony. Like mm. by the end of the, the by the end of that game, something that does not occur in Alan Wake is you have like an assault rifle and a sawed off, and you're shooting like ten foot tall, uh, fucking hillbilly chainsaw mans. Okay. And even is... Alan is like, this is kind of hack shit. <laughs> nice. When when you see the 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 hillbillies, mm -hmm. like it's kind of this is kind of fucking much stupid. Is there no like bundle that is like, hey, go grab the Fuck two no! one and you want to yeah. hear the best part about playing all three Alan Wake games in a row? Okay, here we go. The version of Alan Wake remastered is better than uh, it, like visually. They changed some of the models than the original Steam release that came out in 2010. But the version on the Epic Store is fucked up. So if you want to play the good version of Alan Wake Remastered, you play it on a console. Uh, then you want to play Alan Wake's American Nightmare? Well, hope you have an old Xbox or a current Steam account because that's the only places that you're going to find it. And then, fun fact, if you want to play Alan Wake 2 on the personal computer, you must play it through the Epic Game Store because okay. that is the only place where it is okay. and it was directly funded by epic so it's not coming off yeah yeah or okay. you could play the console versions which look and perform way worse however and this is really important do not buy games on the epic game store i said you know what i'm only gonna play i you know it's one game it's not you know what i'm just gonna stream it that's fine so uh the other night i was playing alan wake 2 and then i i was like oh i'll go help put my child to bed my human child whom i love i will help place him in his little bassinet and goo goo gaga -ga him and serenade him to sleep with my wife and it will be a wholesome moment and then i'll come back 10 minutes later and i will resume playing my spooky alan wake game and i sat down to a completely black screen and i'm like that's weird and then I clicked on it and it told me that the game was in the process of crashing because um, I was running uh, an external overlay on top of it, which I was not. Nice. Cool. Uh, and then when yeah. it crashed, I noticed that I had been logged out of the Epic Game Store. So I went to go log back in and it was like, well, the servers are down worldwide. And despite the fact that you had saved your credentials for offline mode, because you didn't lose your internet because they lost their authentication. Yeah. It's dead. Look, I, don't, and I, don't think... I spent half an hour trying to get it back up. 
Look, I don't think anyone's showing up to the Epic Game Store because they want to. They're showing up because that's how you got to play fucking uh yeah. rumble verse when that's the only way to play it or that's how you got to play at the time when i um um hades when it's the only way to play it or darkest dungeon you know so like, like specifically uh epic game store does not have an ability to go hey i would like to play in offline mode it only says hey let me keep playing if i'm offline yeah which means that if their off servers fail it knocks you off anyway it's only if it fails on your end, not if it only it fails on their end. So it was, oh boy, <sighs> oh, very, very, don't buy games on the Epic Game Store. In fact, every time it. I stream Alan Wake 2, I'm going to talk about how you shouldn't buy games on the Epic Game Store. I mean, uh, Sifu was also on console, thankfully, right? So, uh, yeah, but like, yeah, if you, if you, I mean, you don't always get a choice depending on the game, so. So, a uh, pile of shit. I hate it. Uh, the, my streams are actually going to be titled Don't Buy Games on the Epic Game Store. Also, Alan Wake 2. For the remainder of me going through this game. I'm so frustrated by it. Um, total momentum killer on that. However, Alan Wake 2 itself... Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, God. Oh, man. I have not... Hey... Have you ever imagined what it would be like if instead of being a Japanese guy, Hideo Kojima was Finnish and wanted to write games in the sauna? Wait, what? <laughs> then you need to play Alan Wake 2 because this is the most self-indulgent, masturbatory, in love with itself video game I have ever fucking played. And it is so goddamn good. You can see Sam Lake in a sauna going, I'm writing so much video game right now. Ooh, I'm a writer. Because the game's about being a writer. Mm -hmm. And as a writer, it's writing the most writing I've ever seen in a writing game with writing in it. Okay. <laughs> Sam Lake plays Sam Lake in this game. The actor who portrays Alex Casey, also known as Max Payne, who is also a real person in the game, voiced by Max Payne's voice actor. I see. Okay. We're who is upset this. at the movie rendition of the fake character Alex Casey. Yeah. Because okay, he's a real character named Alex Casey. And the whole time I'm sitting there going, is he even a real person at all? Who is like, also the same voice actor as Thomas Zane, a character from the first game, and Zachariah Trench, the director from Control, which is crazy because Thomas Zane used to be voiced by James McCaffrey, who was Max Payne, but now is voiced by the actual real Finnish actor who plays Alan Wake in live action. So that you can have scenes of Alan Wake talking to Thomas Zane, who looks like Alan Wake, and it's Alan Wake's voice actor talking to Alan Wake's actor. So you're describing a Black Mirror <laughs> episode is, is is what's happening here. Because like th th it sounds like we're attempting to get meta on a level that uh that a Black Mirror episode has has attempted. And does it land? Oh man, does it land? Okay. I, I I walked away from my second sitting with that game going, it has been the first time since Metal Gear that I feel like me going through all of the stuff beforehand was actually worth it. Usually it's not. If you played through Drakengard for Shit to learn <laughs> to about to near, near. <laughs> you fucking wasted your time you wasted it context okay? is nice but you yeah you probably okay? could have gotten if you quick, went quick through near in order to find out stuff for the near collab in 14 well then you played a wasted good game your time well you that right mean, not really those are good games you know Nothing wrong with no, them. but in terms of like getting more out of the thing later, getting what's real, what's collect connected to it. Yeah, like okay. Alan Wake Two is, I'm going to assume, just as crazy and just as fancy 
if you have not played any of the others. But it also works on the assumption that you played Alan Wake 1 and Control yesterday. Mm-hmm. That's what you like, said, yeah. It, yeah, but it's it's much, much stronger than I anticipated. That was secondhand information. I'm now going firsthand. Yeah, it, it is under the assumption that you are you are binging this on Netflix. So you, so you mentioned a lot of that uh, uh, prior, but I guess the, so the update here is and it's and it's worth it. It sounds like. Oh, that. it's super worth it. OK, it's it's uh, it's changed genres which I think is expertly dealt with in game in that Alan was writing thriller and now he's writing horror. So it is moved from a action game, like a, like a shooting action game to a survival horror game. Okay. Um, I mean, it, it is scary like, as hell. Actually, it's still a shooter, but the way resources it, and threats are handled is different then instead of being built off of max Payne, it's built off resident evil 2 remake okay like that's that's its its core inspiration um it is it is doing it is doing a lot over and over and over mechanically and stylistically um, it is having unreliable narration from multiple points. It is constantly switching your location. It is having you scrounge around in the dirt to find little pieces of information to put on a mental cork board so that you can solve parts of the mystery. Um, Gene was hanging out in chat when I was playing through it, and he was like, see, we don't need Silent Hill anymore. And I'm like, you know what? Damn. Yeah. Jesus yeah, Christ. Okay. Wow. Okay. Wow. I can see it. I really? Can see it. You're co signing that. Yeah. Wow. It has um it has so I, I'm very lucky in that I haven't just um I haven't just uh you know played through the games that this is taking from, both directly and indirectly. It is also uh, I'm also very familiar with the TV show that it is stealing the most from, which is Twin Peaks Season 3, The Return, mm -hmm. to the point where Alan's sequence is called The Return. Mm -hmm. Like, like it's the same fucking title. It's 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 laughably overt. I, you know, I don't know why I've met, like, I saw the, the Deadly Premonition twin peaks like vibe has always been like one that I've, i'm peripherally aware of but like yeah i i i now i'm like i don't know anything really about alan wake but like i for some reason i feel like I, it probably also belonged in that category so too. i was talking about that when i was going through uh alan wake and i was like what the hell happened that in in 2010 two different games that are based off of twin peaks came out like that's weird, right? To which somebody Quite. said that the the worldwide DVD box set for Twin Peaks came out in like 2007. <laughs> so that kind mm. of does that. People are telling me that it was called Return before Twin Peaks is the Return. Well, that's just perfect. Um, but yeah, no. Um, Alan Wake is fascinating. It's visually incredible, like from a directing uh, integration of live action, integration of mixed media, integration of sound, voice, uh, incredible graphics, uh, fantastic character performances. Uh, it's fun to play. It's spooky. And it is constantly, incessantly self-indulgent in its own premise that it feels like I am witnessing Finnish genius Kojumbo just work their work their their fucking like Move Icelandic magic. Getting all in there. Okay. It it is incredible. I mean from the, the bit described about the um the, 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 the talk show that he walks in on or whatever, like I'm already like, oh, there's like a there's a meta talk show bit somewhere in there, so Oh, yeah. there sure is. They must be 
willing to yeah jump all over the place and do mixed wild you shit. know what i mm-hmm. was just i was just reminded of probably the best excuse sorry the best example of just how incestuously self-indulgent this game is so quantum break is fully owned by microsoft and thus cannot be included mm-hmm. this remedy thing Mm -hmm. however you could for example have a relative of the original sheriff from uh, from tom will said twin peaks from bright falls her name was i forget her first name but it was breaker sheriff breaker right so maybe it's her little brother maybe it's a cousin but regardless you run into the new sheriff whose name is tim breaker who was who happens to be portrayed and acted by the actor who played the main character in Quantum Break, a game in which you are constantly time breaking all over the place. Okay. And you yeah. go, and he looks at you and goes, Hey, I'm Tim Breaker. Ah. So, ah. so do and they do he just disappears from the game after his reference is over? So do do they just like take Alan Wake's character and then recreate the first level of Max Payne and just let you play that at some point and and fucking like Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to I'm going to answer that really carefully. Okay, all right. Yeah. With the uh-huh. phrase uh-huh. No. No. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's pretty fun. That's a, that's a cool idea. Yeah. I see. I see. Um it it is like you run into Alex Casey, the fictional character at one point, and if anyone was confused that this is going this is Max Payne now that they don't own Max Payne anymore, he's wearing Max's ugly tie. Like it is a one-to-one recreation of the character in a fancier polygon with a different name. Hey man, when when we went back to Shadow Moses in MGS four, I enjoyed it. I'm I'm down it's, for this. Um, do we keep it low poly though? I guess is the question. Or no, do you, no, no, no. Yeah, it's no, it's, okay. it's everything okay. is immaculately, perfectly detailed and 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 gorgeous. Um, that's fun. I I am I am the entirety the entirety of the time I was playing that game. I am sitting there going it how much of what I am playing is actually happening and how many of these characters are r- even real and that feeling never left mm. it's it, I, I I don't know I appreciate <laughs> uh, uh people have heard me say this before I appreciate when an entry in a series comes out that is like a love letter to all the things prior and just fully embraces that and like goes all in on it. Um, yeah. That happens in a couple other things that I really enjoy. So this sounds kind of like that. It's, it's, you know, you're playing through it and you're like, boy, Remedy loves Alan Wake. And they love that Alan has to tell you that he's a writer every time you interact with him. I'm pulling you out of the fucking mud after you appeared there for no reason. Who are you? I'm Alan Wake. And then you you just perk up your ears and you lean, lean real close. It's like, <gasps> and then he says it. And you're like, yay. And you clap. And then you get back to the, the mind-bending nonsense of the story. But then the chapter ends and then you have the in-house band at Remedy play a fucking great piece of original music that I think is spoiling the game after the end of every chapter but i don't know (laughs) music spoilers okay interesting like the the, these incredible rock ballads that are like i'm a writer and i'm trapped in hell and i'll get out with the fancy or you know whatever (laughs) just like i feel like it's just telling me the whole plot but i can't quite understand what it means so maybe feeling spoilers (laughs) (laughs) Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, it is. It is stellar. 
It is absolutely fucking fantastic. The only flaws is the Epic Game Store, and then when you go to load the map, uh, the map takes a really long time to load in because it wants to load like a physical map that exists inside your mind place, and and it can it can you know it loads in the map, but the map has like a fucking shitty texture, and you have to wait a second. That's like that's my two complaints. Okay. How far are you? I uh, I am six and a half hours in. Yeah. Okay. As to what that actually means compared to the the rest of the game, I have no idea. The chapters are also like really confusingly titled, in that Saga and Alan have you play as both the FBI profile lady and Alan. And oh, their chapters. Yeah, the lady from the are, trailer. Yeah, the trailers are labeled differently. In which, like, Saga has chapter one and chapter two of her book, and okay. Alan has chapter one and chapter two of his book. Okay. Hmm. Um, super good, cool, very, very interesting, very, very rewarding extraordinarily rewarding the only last thing that i want to say is that like the very first thing that you see in the game once you get control is what is supposed to be a bloated waterlogged zombie corpse man that happens to look exactly like my naked body <laughs> and and like you you perform an autopsy on this person uh -huh. and i'm like this Hey, <laughs> this is violently uncomfortable. This is this is really, really uncomfortable. Lowercase. Hey, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I I was you know you know you do that thing where you load up a game on PC and you you tweak the settings and you put an OBS to make sure it runs good. And I took a screenshot of it and sent it to to Paige and she was like, "What the fuck is this? Why why the fuck are you? Why why?" And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know why my why my fucking naked body is in there. I mean, I, I'm sure at some point in, in this industry you're going to encounter models of characters that look uncomfortably like you going through Mortal Kombat style disembowelment yeah. and and just have to yeah, deal no, with that. Yeah, no, but instead it's like look at this balding gross naked guy stalking you through the oh it's scary cuz he's so disgusting and I'm like, "Oh. Oh, it's my feelings." <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Okay. 